Hi guys, my name is Shannon, and we are so excited that you guys are here watching this video. Hey, what's up, New Life family? I just want to take a moment to remind you that our consecration is right around the corner. This is the time that we take out in the beginning of the year to give it back to God, to spend with God, to get clarity, to get direction, uh, to get an anointing, uh, to repent, whatever it is. We do it throughout this entire week of consecration. It's going to be amazing. I want you to make sure that you position yourselves for our 6 a.m. prayer, which is going to be every morning on Facebook Live. And then we have noonday services taking place Wednesday through Friday. And of course, our nightly services are going to be 7.30 p.m. every night, Monday through Friday. And so stay tuned, stay on alert for our fasting schedule and what that will look like. We even have something for our children so that our babies will be able to participate. It's going to be an amazing time. Holy consecration is right around the corner. And you want to make sure you are in the building and taking part. God is going to blow our minds. This is the year for us to execute every single plan, dream, idea, and goal that God has given us. I can't wait to see you next week at Holy Consecration. I'm here at MMCC Wilson and check it out. Love y'all. I know some deep person going to say, y'all should be fasting all year long and y'all should be this and y'all should be that. Okay, great. We do. However, this is our week of corporate fasting. And I know some people say, you know, uh, the fast, it ain't all that hard. No, it's not meant to be. All right. It's not meant to be. It is meant for our entire church. And we have people who can fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And we have people who can't fast for, uh, who can only fast a day. Regardless, we have children fasting with us. Our children fast with us. Our children pray with us. So we make it very moderate and very easy. And it's really a time for our church as a whole to come together. And uh, I just want to share with you all um, a few things and a few reasons why consecration is so important and uh, fasting is so important uh, to the body of Christ. And so as we go into next week, I'm going to be sharing a few things with you. But get me, let me give you um, some information in regards to next week, MMCC. And you're going to hear this again Wednesday in more in depth. But for next week, Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m., we're going to be a nightly service here in the sanctuary. Uh, but before we get to the 730 service, we got to first talk about 6 a.m. Every every morning at 6 a.m., we're going to be on Facebook Live praying and there will be, be various people praying um, and calling out. And they have different prayer topics and things of that nature. So we want you guys to set your clocks not for 6 a.m. We want you to set them for 545 so you can get up, wash your face walk the walk the room walk the living room we do not want you sitting in your bed i can't stress that enough we don't want you sitting in your bed type that in the comment section i'm gonna get out the bed a prayer that monday night god is going to bless us and that's our focus there will be different again prayer focuses on that night that god is going to give us and we're just going to cry out to god we're going to pray it's going to be amazing tuesday is a night of worship now, this is something different that we have um, implemented in our consecration. Um, and it is something that I think is necessary. Worship through song, praise through song. And uh, we have some amazing singers here. And we're just going to come on Tuesday night and we're just going to sing to the Lord until we cannot sing anymore. It is not a concert. It is not a performance. It is worship. And so everybody in the congregation is going to be able to join in. And we don't care how you sound, but it's a it's an act of worship, being able to sing to the Lord. There's just something about the song of Zion. And um, I want to say this loosely and I don't want to I don't want to offend anybody when I say this. But there is nothing like the black church sound. There is nothing like the sound of a people. Watch this who know what freedom feels like and who know what freedom sounds like and what freedom looks like. There's nothing like the sound of a free people. And so when you are a worshiper, you don't have to know the lyrics. You don't have to have the best voice. You don't have to be a leader. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's going to be your time to worship God through song on Tuesday night. It's going to be amazing. Now, on Wednesday, 
because I know y'all been waiting for this. You been waiting? Okay. Where's Zay at? Is Zay up here? Wednesday is going to be amazing because Wednesday we have 6 a.m. prayer again because 6 a.m. prayer is when? Every day. 6 a.m. prayer on Wednesday. But on Wednesday during the day, we have our 12 noon uh, service. It's going to be an hour of power. I told y'all to take off work. Did you take off work? Can I take off school? No, you can't take off school, baby. <laughs> you got you to gotta go to school. Maybe next year. Yeah, heaven's so heaven's so say, can I take off school? No, you can't take off school. You got to go to get your education and all that stuff. Do I have another camera angle? I need to pause real quick. You got another camera angle? I need y'all to look at Rakita. See, if this is not, is, which camera's on? This one? If you not like her in 2023, don't join this church. Huh? Rocky said, I'm going to be in place in case my pastor hoop. Y'all, look at, look at her. Yeah, come on. What? Uh 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 uh. No, go back. Uh 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 uh. No no no. Uh uh uh. Okay, we work on it. It's fine. But at least, <laughs> and and you know what I hate about it? I hate that she has the headphones on that aren't plugged up. Are they plugged up to anything? Oh, okay, you just okay. They're not, but they're not plugged up. Okay, I really hate it. But she is, she said, I, I'm doing whatever my pastor need me to do in, in 2023. And if y'all not like that, you need to go find, go, go and find you another church, okay? Crown. crown. She wants to be crowned. And it's the talk back mic with nobody else to talk to. That's what's blessing me. And, 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 the, and the mock iPad or the mock laptop over there. The you can hit the track. Okay, I, this whole thing, put me back, put me back, get off, because <laughs> this, this is blessing me. If y'all not, I'm telling you, if y'all not doing this, I need y'all to go find someone. Okay, so Wednesday, our 12 noon services will start. We'll have 12 noon services Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are going to be days of um, our hour of power during the noon day, all right? Then that night, Wednesday night, is going to be the night of repentance. Wednesday night is going to be the night we call out to God, cry out to God, and repent and turn back to Him. Why am, we, why am I repenting? I'm already be praying. No, no, no. Repentance is necessary. Wednesday is going to be the night that you learn how to repent, learn the power of repentance, continue to repent. Well, I'm saved. Well, there's nothing wrong with continuing to repent because repentance means a change of heart. It means a, a turn, a change of heart. And as you continue to walk with God and grow in God, repentance is going to be necessary because even though you are striving uh, for perfection, you're going to have moments where Scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So you're going to want to be here. Thursday night, okay, Thursday night is a night of healing and deliverance. It's a night of deliverance. And healing. You need healing, come out. If you want to be delivered, come out. That is going to be a night, an intense night. Every night's going to be intense. But I am looking for God to work miracles, signs, and wonders. And so we're really going to be focused on deliverance, God bringing deliverance to his people. So if you're struggling with something, if you're looking to get out of something, if you're looking to get over something, if you're looking to get through something, um, that night is going to be a night of deliverance for you. And Friday night. Y'all ready for Friday night? Is this helping y'all? Are y'all ready? Friday night is going to be the night of victory. And so you want to make sure that you are in the building um, here for our consecration. 6 a.m. prayer on Facebook all week long. And then our 12 noon services Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then our night services all week long, Monday through Friday, starting at 7.30 p.m. And so each night has a theme. MMCC Wilson, um, we're asking you to be in white on certain nights and, on, and black on certain nights. And so this is, for those of you who've never done consecration with us, this is not the week to come in and look cute. This is consecration, not convocation. Amen. So you don't worry about heels. Don't worry about makeup. Don't worry about lashes. Don't worry about earrings. Kay Kayla, Kayla, look at me. Okay. okay, you see? 
all right? No lashes. Men, go ahead, get your edge-ups and haircuts before then. Uh, we're not, again, no, no name brand stuff. Leave your Gucci's, your red bottoms, all that stuff. Leave all that stuff at home. This, again, is a night that we cry out, call, the week that we call, call out to God and cry out to God, all right? Now, why is this important? And I'm going to let y'all go. Why is this important? Because when I start talking about this, I'll start trying to prophesy, you know, you know, no, 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 we got to, we got to wait. No, no, don't push me. Don't do that. Why is this important? It's important because what consecration does, and many people get confused, consecration is a time to be set apart. All right. When you consecrate yourself, you set yourself apart from certain things. Okay. Fasting, you fast from food. Now, there's a difference because with fasting, there's usually a return to something. So what I mean by that is I'm fasting from food for a set amount of time. I'm fasting for three days. Well, after that three days, you're going to go back to food, right? Um, I'm fasting from, uh, you know, water or juice or soda or whatever. Or your plan is to eventually go back or you may cut it off, right? But consecration is when you set yourself apart and you stay away from what you set yourself apart from. Am, am I making sense? So we're asking, we're wanting to consecrate from certain things that grab our attention that should not have our attention. Now, I'm going to get in here and some, it's gonna, some of y'all going to say, ooh, ah, we're consecrating, watch this, from those gray areas in our lives. Those things that are not sins, but those things that we know we shouldn't be doing. Close the, close the virtual doors. God, there's some areas in your life that you continually play with, flirt with, don't take serious because either you're too lazy or you enjoy it too much to actually deal with it. And then by the time you get ready to deal with it, it is full-fledged born and it is dealing with you. But God is saying in this moment and in this time, you've got to hurry up and get rid of all of the weight. That's what the writer says. <coughs> get rid of the weight and the sin that so easily besets you. So the writer in Hebrews is telling us that there are some things in your life. And I want you to hear me good that are not necessarily sins, but are weights. God wants you to consecrate. He wants you to set yourself apart from IG, in, from Facebook, from uh, TikTok, from Snapchat. He wants you to set yourself apart. You know, you have so many people in this day and time um, that are trying to figure out what they can still do and still be saved. It is, it is, it is such a... It is such a movement and a moment where people don't want to crucify the, their flesh. And in fact, Scripture teaches us to crucify, kill our flesh, flesh. But what I believe most people is doing is pacifying their flesh. And you got to be careful because what the enemy will do, especially in this day and time, is make you feel as if what you are going through or what you desire to do is justified because it makes you feel good and there is no scripture to condemn what you feel. OK, let me put it this way. You got people who will say, um, I drink, but the Bible will say don't get drunk. So I don't get drunk, drunk, but I drink. You know, um, you got people who will uh, say, you know, uh, I masturbate because the Bible don't say nothing about that. Uh, gray areas. You'll, you'll have people who say, well, the Bible don't say anything about cussing or the Bible don't say, you know, the Bible don't say it's, it's, it's not bad to cuss. You know, we, we, we have the, those gray areas, but those are weights. But let me tell you what the Bible does say. The Bible says set yourself apart from everybody else. You are peculiar. You are a royal priesthood. You are not like the world. You can be in the world, but not of the world. Well, if you drinking and the world is drinking, how can we tell a difference? If you cussing and the world is cussing, how can we tell a difference? If you hitting and missing in prayer and the world is hitting and missing in prayer, how do we make a difference? Because don't get it twisted. The world does pray 
Every time a tragedy happens, then everybody wants to say, let's pray for America. But no, the real saints pray in the good times, the bad times, the unpopular times, and people don't want to talk about it. I really believe that there will be a whole lot more tragedy in America if the real saints stop praying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you got to learn the art of consecration and setting yourself apart. It is different from fasting. Um, consecrate from Netflix. Consecrate from, from Hulu. Um, are y'all ready for this? Consecrate from cell phones. Whew. Consecrate. It gives you that time to focus on you. I want to pray this to, for somebody and prophesy this for somebody. May the Lord deliver you from the spirit and thoughts of comparison. You are going to have to separate yourself from media because God has given you some amazing things that can't nobody do but you. God has given you some amazing vision that can't nobody do but you. Now, other people may do it and they may be in the same field as you, but can't nobody do it like you. And it's almost like this. You ever walk on the bread aisle? And you see white bread, wheat bread, and but you see like five different types of wheat bread, five different types of white bread. You got Sara Lee, you got um, Nature's Own, you got all this, all the, the the store brand of bread. But none of them look at each other and say, "Well, we're not going to put our bread out there because they got their bread." No, they stay in their lane. And what consecration will do for you is it will allow you to stop looking at somebody else's lane and mismanaging yours. So what? Somebody else is doing it. When you consecrate, God will download it in you. And instead of you competing and comparing, you will start celebrating somebody else and say, hey, yo, that's dope. How you doing? But this is the way that God has given me to do it. I hope I'm helping somebody in here. And consecration is that time of separation. Where it's just you and God, where you and God are talking, where God is downloading things in you, where you're able to talk back to God and say, well, God, why do I need to do this? I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do next. You'll be able to talk to God and say, why, why did you put this on me? Whatever frustrations, whatever uh, direction, whatever wisdom you need, you have that opportunity to talk back to God. Is this helping somebody? You've got to be specific in what you consecrate from. Now, there are some things that will bother me that won't bother you. And there's some things that will bother you that won't bother me. Certain shows that that I can't watch, they're triggers and reminders. Um, I feel this so heavy and I'm trying not to do it. May the Lord deliver you from certain triggers. May the Lord deliver you from certain triggers. I'm telling you, you're going to want to come to consecration next week. Because there are some triggers that you can't help and you need help getting over them. And you, sit, you, will, you will be sitting there perfectly fine. And I spoke about this on a previous live where I said some of your triggers is actually other people's success to where whenever you see them celebrating, it triggers you. And just because it triggers you does it not mean that you are a hater. Because you celebrate other people. You love to see other people's success. But the danger is their success reminds you of your failure. When you see somebody else getting married, you ain't hating on them. You're like, mm, they ugly. No, you're like, yo, that is dope. I'm glad they got somebody. But then it reminds you that you are by yourself. When you see somebody else get a promotion, yo, that's amazing. But it reminds you of how much you hate your job. When you see somebody else get, get a house, it reminds you of how you got denied in regards to your house. So it can, it, it can mess with you if you are not careful. Triggers, certain smells. You, like if you smell somebody's cologne, somebody's perfume, if you smell somebody's house, it will remind you of certain things and it will send you into a downward spiral. But I am praying right now, as a matter of fact, God, don't even wait until consecration. I'm praying for everyone who, will, who is watching me who battle silent triggers, God, I pray that you deliver them right now in the name of Jesus. Deliver them right now in the name of Jesus from silent triggers. And, and, and the danger is 
the only person that you can really talk to, the only people is Jesus and your therapist, because you don't want your friends to start looking at you like a hater. You don't want your family to look at you like you're crazy because, you know, you're saying, well, I'm depressed today because so and so got married. And, they, you know, and they make you feel even worse about it and because can't, you cannot explain why you are triggered. You just know you're triggered. But I am here in the power of the Holy Ghost on this unplanned life because we didn't plan this. To tell you that God wants to deliver you, God is going to deliver you, and God will deliver you from silent triggers. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this is. May this be, actually, may last night be the last night that you went to bed triggered over something. No more going to bed early because you're triggered. No more shutting down your day early because you're triggered. No more backing out of business deals. Because you're triggered. You are getting ready to be too successful to be sitting in board meetings and all of a sudden get triggered. I come against random triggers. Glory to God. I come against random triggers where you are just going throughout your day and you just randomly get triggered. You just randomly get frustrated. You just randomly get annoyed. You just randomly get, 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 get to this place where you shut down. I bind it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody type that in the comment section. No more triggers. No more triggers. Because, you know, people will make you feel like you are crazy and you are always going through something. When the truth is, you're not that person. It's not like you want attention, but you cannot help what you are battling and what you are fighting. This is why consecration is so important, because consecration is going to reveal to you that it is a trick of the enemy and you're not the only one fighting. You're not the only one going through by yourself. Here, even here in, in the new year, I told our leadership team yesterday that if you are not careful, you will take old last year's feelings into this year. You'll take old feelings into a new year. But I am praying that I, that will not be the case for you, my friend. I'm praying my son, my daughter, my sister, my brother, whoever you are watching this, that you will not take old feelings into a new year. The time will change, but your feelings won't. Not anymore. Not anymore. Am I helping you? You sure? Am I helping you? Rocky, am I helping you? Because Facebook ain't talking to me. You got my back? And no, no, don't run, not yet. Not yet. Because if you run, I might run behind you. No, no, I don't want no track. Cause th listen, because this run, this run, a track ain't gonna be able to. A track won't be able to 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 keep up with this. Because, um, as a matter of fact, I really believe God gonna allow you to run out of some stuff. You can't walk. This is urgent. Like you gotta run. Kayla done run. Look, Kayla ran. Like you gotta run out of some stuff. This is urgent. God needs to expedite this process because you cannot wait to have a second half testimony. You're gonna have testimonies in the first quarter. You can't wait to stuff to manifest into December. God, here, this, this consecration, I'm telling you, don't sit in uh, uh, New Bern, don't sit in Jacksonville, don't sit in Virginia and say, you know what, I'm gonna watch them on live. No, drive down here, get here. Don't sit in Wilson and say, you know, I got to work in them. No, get here. Get here. Your life is on the line. There's an intensity that is going to take place next week. There's something in the building that you're going to need. And, and I'm telling you, God is going to give you some results tonight. And those results, you're going to say, you know what? I need to get to, I need to, get to Wilson to get the rest of it. Let me see what's going on. Let me see what's going on. This this is this is urgent. You're gonna you're gonna run out of some stuff. You're gonna run out of some stuff. That's it. No more triggers. No more. I'm telling y'all, man. What I what I feel, and I spoke this last year. I said the first couple of months, and Trayvon he, I always I told a story. Trayvon Trayvon's like Rev. Just <laughs> would he like that old lady on that video? Just, I was Trayvon because I gave this word. I said, the first three months of the year are going to be hard, but they're going to be productive. 
And Trayvon felt that word, like, he's just like, yo, I, I, he's like, I trust all your words, but he said, I felt that word. And even it popped up in my memory today, in my Facebook memory, because I shared the video, and it just, God reminded me, I allowed you to be productive under pressure. Whew, I could run right there. Are you, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? God allowed us to be productive under pressure. Now, am I saying that's going to be the case this year? No, 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 mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is what I uttered Sunday, this one word. We got three months to perform this one word. And when you get here Wednesday, y'all going to see the intensity and hear the intensity during our vision night. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But you're going to hear this one word and you got you got to do it within these next three months. Y'all know what that word is? What's the one word? Execute. execute, execute. Type it in the comment section. Execute. What, what does execute mean? Execute means to fully carry out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fully carry out. You got three months, no half moves, no half doing stuff. Fully carry out everything that you start in these next three months. You better not announce a book and do not fully carry it out. You better not announce a business plan and don't fully carry it out. Because when you fully carry it out, I'm telling you this, God is going to pay you for what you are passionate about. This is this is blessing me all by myself. Will it be hard? Yes. But you got to carry it out. Execute. Fully. No more. Just type it in the comment section. No more half moves. There's 40 of y'all who need to receive that. No more half moves. No more, no more premature moves. No more premature announcements. No more coming soon announcements. No more, I'm about to do this and, and you haven't did it. You only, you do not need to make an announcement to pump you up. No, you got my voice to remind you that you are too good. You are too talented. You're too gifted. You're too amazing to halfway do stuff. Execute the plan. I'm, is, they, is there books in the, other, is in the library? Because I'm about to run through that. His books over there. I'm about to be. I, I'm about to run right into a book, Harry Potter. I'm about to run right into a Harry Potter book. Are you hearing me? Heaven. You hear what I'm telling you? What I say? Execute. No more half moves. A lord. What I say? Huh? No more half moves. Kayla, execute. Makita, no more half moves. Derrica, no more half moves. You got to execute it. I hope Facebook, I hope this is helping Facebook. No more half moves. You got to have an intensity that's going to last through January, that's going to last through February, that's going to last through March. I must say this last thing about execute. Um, because somebody needs to hear this, all right? And if the people in here don't um, clap or say amen or respond, Lord, you just clap because you're like, amen. So you just clap because you're like, hallelujah. So you just clap, okay? All right, here's what I'm saying. Derrica, here's what I'm telling y'all. Facebook, you need to heart and you need to like this. When it comes to your vision, God does not care about your bank account. He's not intimidated by your money. He's, he's, he's not intimidated by what you don't have. When he gave you the vision, he gave it to you in spite, in spite of what you don't have, which means this, and this is where y'all give me the hearts and the likes. The bill don't belong to you. It belongs to God. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I ain't hear nothing on my right side. All I heard, I heard it on the left side. But my right side, are you hearing what I'm saying? 
the bill, type that in the comment section. This bill belongs to God. You need 10,000, it belongs to God. I was sitting in the office with Pastor G. I got a call from our administrators and said, hey, Pastor, we need to pay for this. We need to pay for that. And we need to pay for that. And we only have this and we only have that and we only have that. And if we do this, we can't do that because that is that and that is that and that is that. Anybody ever been there? Well, you, what, you know what I'm saying? Well, you got to make a decision on, on the, the things that are necessity versus the things that are desire. You got, no, you're not going to have to choose like that no more because the bill belongs to God. I sat back there and I was struggling. I was writing on it. I said, okay, if we get these people to do this, if okay, if I move this here, and maybe if I do this, and maybe if I do that. And, and I, I remember something I spoke last year. And I spoke the days of me going broke over something that doesn't belong to me anyway are over. The vision God gave me, it don't belong to me. Shannon, say amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It don't belong to me. So I'm not going to go broke. I'm not going to stress. <clears throat> I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be frustrated over something that doesn't belong to me in the first place. This bill belongs to God. Don't stress. Don't worry. Don't like God is going to foot the bill. He's going to take care of it. And my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. My needs, my needs are only my needs because God gave them to me. My wants are my desires. God will give me everything I need because he gave me the need. I need to have money to do ministry. He's going to take care of it. I need to have money to fulfill this vision and this dream and this business. He's going to take care of it. I'm not going to stress. I got three months to execute. I got three months to make this happen. I got three months to make it come to pass. Execute is our word for the next three months. Execute. Thank you, guys. We hope you enjoyed. See you later. Peace.